thank you so much to those viewers that are going to hop on and join us. Um, as we get started, I just want to welcome you. Welcome to those of you that are hopping on and, and watching this live on Facebook. This is our Facebook Live Q&A, our Family Strong series. So welcome to those of you that are, that are joining us, um, whether you're in the middle of your lunch or you're scrolling and you stop and tapped on this video, I just wanna say thank you. Um, those of you out there, our viewers are who um, really continue to motivate us to do this. In addition to being able to bring to you, to our greater community to shine a light on some of our incredible business owners and business partners of the chamber. I have the privilege of introducing two of those today, um, actually a sister duo, which is gonna be super fun. Uh, so, but first, if we haven't had the chance of meeting, I'm Lindsay Kiesler, President and CEO of the Chamber of Catawba County. Uh, what an honor and a privilege it is to serve business, uh, work alongside of business, particularly over the last seven months that have been extremely challenging to many. Um, this Facebook Live Q&A series was birthed from that. Um, your chamber took a really hard pivot into the di digital space, but we thought, what a great opportunity to utilize our great platform um, to be able to bring hope, um, also to be able to promote some of our great partners across the community, uh, but in addition, allow you to then hear from their expertise, uh, their leadership philosophy, and take something away that you can apply uh, to benefit your own business. So today, um, again, I have the privilege of introducing uh, Warehouse Distillery. You're gonna hear from that sister duo here in just a second, but uh, first, I want to thank our great sponsor. So Mike Kelly, the owner and also broker in charge of Hickory Real Estate Group, has made it possible for us to continue to do this um, and bring these interviews to you. So Mike is on, and I know he wants to say hello. So Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for being our sponsor. Hey, Lindsay. Thank you so much for having me on. It's uh, really an honor to be able to um, help sponsor this series. It's been really good so far. We've had a lot of really good guests that I'm really excited about today's. Um, I'm a big fan of distilleries. So uh, looking forward to seeing what, what they have to say and, uh, and you know, kind of how they run their business. So looking re really looking forward to this one. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Mike Kelly Hicker Real Estate Group, obviously. And uh, we help people buy and sell houses. So if you know of anybody looking to buy or sell, uh, you can find us on Facebook at Hickory Real Estate Group on Facebook or hickoryrealestategroup.com. So thanks again for letting us on. And uh, like I said, appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Really appreciate your sponsorship and your partnership. Also, if you don't know, Mike is on our board of directors. So we're grateful for his leadership as well. Um, all right, this is live. This is your time, viewers, to help us out. So uh, throughout this interview, we encourage you to engage with us. So if you'd like to ask a question, write a comment. If you'd like to make a comment or you like something that we said, um, either jot something down and drop it in the comment box or react to the post. So you see that little heart or the like or the wow face. We love those. So give us some reactions because it really helps us know that you're watching. It also helps us to know that you're really um, enjoying this interview today. So if you are watching live, which I know that there are several viewers already that have hopped on to join us, go ahead and comment hashtag live. So you know Facebook, they like when we have engagement. So we want to make sure that uh, a lot of people can see this interview today. So help us out by engaging with the post. So like, comment, ask a question or react uh, with the hearts, the wows and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, thank you so much. The biggest way you can help us is to share the video. So if you share this interview, other people can see it. If you start a watch party, that's even better. Uh, you can see which friends are watching it along with you. Uh, so thank you so much in advance for helping us out. If you're just tuning in, uh, and thank you, welcome. Thanks for joining us live. This is our Facebook Live Q&A series. Uh, we are, we are, are in the fourth interview of our Family Strong series. So our Family Strong features family-owned businesses. Uh, today, you have we, I have the treat to interview a first-generation business. Uh, but they are not strangers to, uh, to being business owners, at least their family. Uh, but you're going to hear from sisters. So Andy and Bailey's, Andy Foss and Bailey Setzer, uh, so thrilled to spend some time with you, got, you guys today. So thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're excited to be here. 
All right. Well, if you guys haven't had a chance to meet Andy and Bailey, uh, they're more than just sisters, as I mentioned. They're co-owners co of Warehouse Distil Distillery, along with their parents, Ron and Stephanie Setzer. Warehouse Distillery is an award-winning family-owned craft distillery in Newton, and it's the home of Boundary Street Spirits. So, uh, ladies, so thrilled that you're here. Uh, I'm tickled to learn more about your background and more about the distillery business, uh, and particularly the things that you guys have started. Uh, so, so thank you again. All right. Our, all of our interviews start out with this fun, we call it a rapid fire Q&A. So we want to get to know you as individuals, maybe some in the business, but also outside the business. So are you guys ready for this? I think so. <laughs> sure. All right. All right. Uh, okay, Bailey, I'm going to start with you. Okay. What is one cause that's near and dear to your heart? Um, probably anything to do with puppies, rescuing puppies, um, dog rescues like Hartman's Haven and Happy Tales, the Humane Society, things like that. If I could have 16 dogs, I would. I love it. Andy, what is the what is one of the most random facts about you? Um, that my name is not short for anything. It's just Andy. <laughs> what Bailey? What is Andy's greatest strength that she brings to the business? Um, she's extremely pragmatic, and I think that's her best quality. All right, now it's your turn, Andy. What does Bailey bring to the business? Um, her creativity, for sure. Bailey, what's your favorite go-to productivity hack? Um, probably a lot of coffee, make a to-do list, prioritize it, and put on some good music. Nice. What kind of music? Um, usually like 70s rock. <laughs> oh, I like it. All right, Andy, what's an experience you've had lately that you would rate a 10 out of 10? Maybe our sound, oh. did our sound glitch out? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Andy, what's an experience you've had lately that you would rate a 10 out of 10? Um, my honeymoon, which was in the beginning of July. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Where did you guys go? Uh, Mexico. Uh, congratulations. On Thank you. Trip. All right, Bailey, what would you do? What would a day of supporting local look like to you? Um, well, it depends on if it's the weekend or the weekday, because I work in Newton, but I live in Lincolnton. So most likely, I would start out with coffee, probably at Narrow and Nosh or Fausto's in Lincolnton. And then I would probably hit up some antique shops like Fantastic Finds or the ones in downtown Lincolnton, maybe Wild Azalea, um, Seventh Moon, spend a little bit too much money. Um, I'd probably grab pizza at Goodwood or Geppetto for lunch. Um, and then probably a beer <laughs> at Untapped or Novel um, at a certain point in the day, and then dinner at another locally owned restaurant like El Paso or Fort Street Grill. Sounds fun. All right, Andy, what is the best piece of advice that you've received? Um, it is from my dad, but he always says, you're a product of every decision that you make. Mm. Bailey, if you could have a 15 conversation with anyone, who would it be? Probably. Dolly Parton or Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes, yes. Andy, what could, if you could give a 30 minute presentation, what would the subject be that you could just have no preparation and, and pull it off? Well, currently um, how to survive and um, not stress out planning a wedding during a pandemic. <laughs> Great. Bailey, books or podcasts? Podcasts. What's your favorite? Red Handed, it's a true crime podcast. <laughs> true crime, nice. Andy, is there something that has made you smile recently? Uh, yes, being able to celebrate my mom's birthday with all of our family. It was just really just the six of us, and it was a perfect day. Bailey, when you aren't at work, where can we find you? Um, probably at home with my boyfriend and my animals, either binge watching TV, cooking, or crafting if I'm feeling motivated. Nice. Andy, if you could jet set any of the, anywhere in the world, maybe it's Mexico again, uh, where, where, where would you go? Um, close, but the Maldives would be my destination. <laughs> Ooh, yes, yes. All right, Bailey, what's your favorite family tradition? Um, probably playing games around the dinner table like Cards Against Humanity or Left Right Center and just laughing together. Love it. 
All right, Andy, what's your favorite morning or pre-5 p.m. beverage? Um, it's very early in the morning. I love anything sweet would be my favorite. Try to stick with water, but sweetness is always a kicker for me. And what am I kidding? I'm interviewing a distillery. Of course, you got to wait till five. So, all right, Bailey, what's your favorite happy hour or uh, any time of the day whenever you want to beverage? Um, if it's any time of the day, I'd probably pick a cocktail, but I'm a big red wine drinker at night. Nice. All right, Andy, what's one word that you would use to describe what it's like working with family? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right, Bailey, what about you? What's your one word? Uh, probably um, challenging. Well, certainly this year has presented a lot of challenges. Um, and yeah. we're going to hopefully get into that a little bit. You guys, um, however, looked challenge in the face and said, you know, how can we respond and serve our community as a result of this pandemic um, based on what we know how to do? And it, we're going to get into that. I want to hear all the details about, <laughs> about what you guys did to shift production. But first, let's let's talk about the the beginnings. Um, tell us the story. You guys, um, your sisters, your mom and dad, Ron and Stephanie. Also, I'm sure you're around the dinner table or something, um, spending time together. How did it come up that we want to start a distillery? Give us the early uh, background of how all this came to be. Well, I graduated from UNCG with an entrepreneurship degree and we were, I had moved back home for the summer and it was a family friend that sparked the interest or kind of brought the idea. And after many conversations at the, in the kitchen with my parents, um, I decided to write the business plan to see how well it could, uh, it, the potential of the industry and all of that. Um, and then we wanted, to, we like the distillery was just it seems so cool, like the distilling industry, and we wanted to bring something unique to our hometown, which was like one big thing. Um, and then, of course, just a little bit of convincing. We I brought Bailey back. Well, we all three brought Bailey back home, and um, then we started. It was it was kind of like perfect timing, honestly, how it all fell into place. But a uh, fun venture. I think that's incredible. So, Andy, did you feel like you've always had kind of this entrepreneurial? flame and entrepreneurial spirit within you and then did your time at UNCG bring that out even more I mean did you have you always known that you wanted to start something of your own um yeah I I love that my parents were able to you know they you know they being entrepreneurs themselves being able to come and go to our soccer games and football games and um be a part dance of our recitals, yeah, yeah dance recitals be a part of our lives as much as they were um I knew that I wanted to work for myself or someone that gave me those hours and they of course told me it's probably going to be yourself so I knew that I want to be some kind of entrepreneur entrepreneur um but I didn't know what I wanted to get into um, I, I mean even as little girls we started a lemonade stand um, <laughs> um, going towards the campground at Lake Hickory every Saturday and Sunday we would be out there or like even weekdays in the summertime we would be out there selling lemonade as little kids and we thought that was like the best days of our lives <laughs> out there selling lemonade to people well you know you saw me perk up and my face completely lit up when you said that that is my lemonade stand is where my entrepreneurial flame was lit yeah. um, I, probably eight years old on uh highway 16 in <laughs> in in conover and my neighbor and i we had a lemonade stand and and to your point i mean the concept of a lemonade stand is if you want to write a business plan think of a lemonade stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. the very very root basics of of you know starting a business and so um what a, an awesome exercise um, and i think just shows the importance of teaching the next generation that entrepreneurial mindset i mean like you guys and everything that i know about you even previous to this interview uh, there are certain things that are within you that are innate, right? You've seen you've seen entrepreneurship modeled since you were little girls, uh, and so I just just wanted to point out just, you you spurred that in me to say that's why I think it's so critically important that we think of that next generation and think of how we can teach them those concepts so that they can then grow up and start their own businesses to add enhance the quality of life of their hometown, just exactly like you guys are doing. Super inspiring. Um, all right, so. Owning a distillery, I'm sure there was a lot of work to get where you are today. So what year did you guys actually open 
the doors, quote unquote, uh, and begin distilling. What year was that? 2018. 2018. So, yeah. and then the concept around the dinner table started in what year? 2015. 2015. <laughs> so from 2015 to 2018 was kind of when, when that vision became reality, started to become reality. I mean, yeah. and then you guys have grown. So I want to get a little bit into that. So day-to-day -day life of being a distillery owner, what does that look like? Well, every day is different, which I think is what makes this industry so much fun is that we're not, ha it's not kind of like, okay, you sit behind a desk and do the same paperwork every day. Though some days Andy is sitting behind a desk doing paperwork, <laughs> um, but we're, we clean the toilets. I mean, we mash and distill ourselves and we bob do the bottling and we clean the bathrooms and do the marketing and make social media plans. And we also both work most of the events that we had pre coronavirus. <laughs> Um, so we kind of, we kind of do everything, which I think keeps us on our toes and also like kind of keeps us excited about what comes next, at least for me. Yeah, yeah. that was, that was like a big thing that me as wanting to be an entrepreneur, I didn't want to have to sit at a desk and work nine to five. Um, I wanted to be on my feet and like go and it's nice to be able to do all different things all day long. So, um, I mean, the other day we were hanging metal to, um, with our dad's help, hanging metal to put back up um, that had been taken down for spray foam. So it's it changes every day. We really don't know what we're walking yeah. into. Which well, I think I, it, that's one thing about being an entrepreneur. I think some people see the outside and the, the glam and glory, quote unquote, right? The headlines, but they don't realize all the work that happens behind the scenes. And, and as an entrepreneur, and I can relate on many levels with this, you have to wear many hats and therefore you have to know things that um, that don't necessarily come naturally, like distilling spirits. So like, how did you, how did you learn the tricks of the trade and distilling um, the spirits that you guys make? Well, dad, our dad was a home brewer um, when we were in high school. And then I actually went into the beer world in college and started brewing a little after college just kind of on the side for fun um so a lot of the base scientific knowledge came from that and then an abundance of research i mean we went to conventions we talked to other distillers in the industry that had more experience than us you know we still reach out to some of our peers for troubleshooting issues if we have something that we don't understand why something's going wrong or happened differently than we expected it to um, so we're lucky to be in an industry that has that community where you can reach out to people and you have friends and mentors and, you know, people that you can bounce ideas off of. And it's, it's really, it's really rewarding, I think. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Well, tell the viewers that aren't necessarily familiar with Warehouse Distillery, by the way, if you're hopping on live, if you join us since we, since we started, if you popped in, uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us live. Um, for our Facebook Live Q&A, our Family Strong series. So I'm talking with Andy Foss and Bailey Setzer. They're the co-owners of Warehouse Distillery. So um, tell our viewers, what are the spirits that you do distill? Like what, what products do you guys produce there? Um, so we have uh, bourbon, um, we, which is, they're all in the name Boundary Street, which is our whiskey line is the way we like to describe it. So we have um, our bourbon, which is two years old, our um, rye whiskey, and then we have a maple whiskey also. Awesome. And the maple is my fave. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> my personal favorite, even though all of them are very tasty. Um, they did, they were very generous to give our leadership Catawba class uh, a tasting several weeks ago. So very, very, very good. All right. So let's talk about, um, it's probably, and, and maybe I'm wrong about this, it's probably unusual uh, for women to be in this business. It, it, is it a very, is it a male dominated field? I think a lot of the alcohol industry, especially the manufacturing side of it tends to be male dominated. We do have a lot of people that come in, expect us to be, you know, in overalls with a beard. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's challenging, I think sometimes because we're, we seem like maybe we're just the pretty sales people. Um, we get that a lot actually. Um, or are you even old enough to drink? <laughs> that kind of thing. Wow. Um, but we, uh, we get asking, asked questions a lot, like, well, who owns it or who's the distiller? And when we tell people what's us, they will be like, no, but really. And we're like, oh, 
we weren't joking. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> We're like, no, really. And then they kind of look at us like, oh, okay. And then, and then you get more questions. I think more recently than previously, we've gotten a lot more like people that are really excited to, to see women in the distilling industry. It's kind of, you know, a change of pace for, and women who drink whiskey, frankly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and luckily for us, we've throughout the, I mean, even just recently, like the past two years of like opening, you know, going out and getting our feet wet in the industry. Um, we've met so many um, influential women in the industry, like yeah. honestly that we didn't even know were in it or a part of it. And um, now we fangirl over them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some our age, some, you know, old, like our parents age, um, but it's really cool to see how many women are actually in the industry. Um, so unfortunately we aren't gonna be the guys with the beards and the overalls, but we are fun and we promise that we'll show you what we know. <laughs> I love it. I think, I love I think it. the challenge of that also motivates us to work harder to prove that like yes. we can do, we may not be able to lift as many things as a man and we're not afraid to ask for help, but we're just as capable of coming up with a whiskey recipe of showing up at an event and talking about our products and, and being enthusiastic about what we have to offer. Oh, I, that's, that's really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you guys. And, and thanks for being a trailblazer. You know, that takes a lot of courage sometimes um, to, to step out and be that, but you guys are certainly an exemplary, um, ex give a great example for other generations to follow. All right, so let's talk about the pandemic. Um, all of us have done some shifting and pivoting. You guys did some significant shifting and pivoting um, to directly respond and help protect our community. Um, from the spread of COVID-19. Tell our, how did you do that? Well, at first I think we were kind of scared the pandemic hit and we were like, okay, well that means no tours or tastings. So there's a huge loss in revenue. Also we're planning yeah. to build a cocktail space. What does that mean for that? So I felt like we were kind of in like a, like a purgatory of sorts and for a little the, bit. All the festivals canceling. We were like, how, how do we reach yeah. people? All the restaurants closing. Um, it was really, we were panicking a little yeah. bit. Um, <laughs> I think we, we were just starting to really get gain momentum. I was going to say, I think everybody, if they were honest, uh, would say there was a little bit of a panic. Like, yeah. what, what do we do? Right. Where are we? We were sweating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then luckily the federal government had changed the, um, the, their laws that allowed us or allowed distilleries to produce um, hand sanitizer. So um, we, we talked about it and I think within maybe two or three hours we were like we're doing it we're starting tomorrow yeah, um, and we did <laughs> and we did um and we I mean we've had people come from I mean how South far, Carolina. yeah South Carolina getting hand driving we, here we've shifted to California Washington New York Maine mm -hmm. Montana which we thought was like <laughs> that was a wild one out there um the Dakotas we Colorado we shipped it all over the country too which is just kind of wild to think that it was like it wasn't in our immediate eyes it was like okay our community needs it here right here in Catawba County primarily and you know parts of North Carolina and then we were getting phone calls from all over the country that other distilleries had already sold out and they couldn't get their hands on it and how much did we have and did we have enough and corporations were calling us because they still had techs in the field and we were like okay, well, now we got to really bump up production even more than we had before. <laughs> and, yeah. and we did. It was a lot of hard work about seven days a week, but it was worth it. It was, it's so cool to, I mean, it still gives me chills thinking about it, how well we like were able to help the people in our community. Like uh, we had the first, maybe it was like the second day we did a drive-through service and we had like cars lined up and it was just, it was just going to be me and Bailey and dad, like handing the hand sanitizer out. We had to go get mom and then a coworker from their other business to come help because we were we so were overwhelmed busy, yeah. and over, and it was just so cool to see how many people showed up and not only supported us, but we were able to kind of support them um, too and give back to them. Well, so. and we started a fundraiser where people could add tips to their purchases and that would help us fund giving away our product to the local first responders. Um, we actually had uh, one lady, it brought us all to tears one day. She tipped us $200 and asked if we had given any to the Conover Police Department. And that allowed us to take like 25 bottles immediately wow. to the Conover Police Department. I mean, we were all like, we had to get over our tears before we even got the stuff in the car to take there. But we were, we were, we were so overwhelmed by the outpouring of support for us 
and for the local first responders to allow us to give back to the community too. Yeah. Like you guys, these are the moments, um, just the very act that you were so, so authentic to say, and this is so real, that at the moment you kind of froze and you had a little paralysis <laughs> there of what do we do? Everything that we know that we're certain about was just completely disrupted. But yeah. it took about one a couple hours to then say, no, we're going to react. And instead of saying, um, you know, oh, no, pity us, you said, what can we do on behalf of our greater community? Um, and I just think that's incredible. What a, what a great story. Talk about silver, silver linings and seeing the good of the pandemic. Um, this is definitely one of our shining star moments. Um, for our community. So thank you guys on behalf of our entire community for, for doing that, for shifting so quickly and reacting. Um, we we were just glad we could help, honestly. I don't feel like for us, it's not something that we feel like was like noble or or to, uh, good to do. We just were like, we have the capabilities, we need to do it. It was more of like a, a, a no other options for us. That's so great. On Facebook, we did have a comment. Someone asked if you still had hand sanitizer available. We do. We yeah. do still have hand sanitizer available in three different sizes. Um, you can order it online for local pickup or for shipping, or you can come here, call us. We'll bring it out to your car um, and do a transaction that way. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you guys again. All right. So we talked about your products. Uh, we talked about your bourbon, um, but... I understand you might have some other products on the horizon that you want to release. So tell us a little bit about that. If you can, it's not too top secret. Well, the plan from the beginning was the next product we wanted to make was gin. Um, and we were on the cusp of finishing out a gin recipe pre-pandemic. Well, pre, pre, pre the cocktail, yeah, yeah, cocktail bar. Pre the cocktail bar that kind of jumped in front of gin. And then the pandemic hit right as we were about to start talking about it again and we were, that we switched everything over to hand sanitizer. So hopefully once we get the cocktail bar back open and you know, the pandemic goes away, <laughs> um, then we can get back to working on gin and that is the next product that we're really excited about. Awesome, well, let's dig a little bit further in this cocktail bar. So um, you mentioned, Andy, that uh, the General Assembly uh, gave uh -huh. some, the laws have definitely evolved and maybe you want to do a little yeah. bit of overview of, um, you know, distilling was, there weren't many distillers. Um, actually in Catawba County, we were one of the trailblazers for distilleries um, uh, several years back. So, but that was because laws and regulations really prevented um, this type of industry to, to exist or be able to operate in the way that you need to, to be able to make money. So talk a little bit about about that with, with the laws and regulations and then how they've evolved to then now allowing uh, cocktails to be served on site. Yeah, so, well, when we first started or when we opened up in uh, 2018, distilleries were allowed to, uh, or pe consumers were allowed to purchase from the distilleries, but it was five bottles per person per, per year. So it's not five of each product, that's just five bottles per person per year. Um, we had to keep everyone's all this kind of information from everybody uh, written down every time they purchased. Um, it was a bit excessive, but we were glad that we were even able to do that because before that, um, it was one bottle per person per year at the um, distillery. And, bef and then, of course, before that, it was none. Um, and that didn't all happen until after 2015. Um, luckily, when we started 2018, we were able to do the five bottles. Um, but now um, we are able to sell unlimited bottles out of the distillery. We are also off, be able, able to offer cocktails um, at the distillery, full size cocktails. Before, um, when we first started, um, we were only allowed to serve little one ounce, a quarter ounce, or a quarter ounce, um, up to a, an ounce per day per person wow. of tastings. Um, we weren't allowed to offer any juice, any water, any kind of not any, any yeah <laughs> anything to go with it um and we had to give it away for free oh, okay you couldn't charge for a tasting okay um, um so now with it being able to we are able to serve cocktails and we're also able to serve or distilleries are also able to obtain um beer and wine permits also um so they're able to do a lot more we just have a lot more flexibilities within our and industry and we can be more, even more of a destination than 
distilleries were previously thought of, kind of more like breweries and wineries function today. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Um, yeah. So we're really excited to get that going. Of course, like we've mentioned multiple times today, the pandemic is kind of slowed us down on the uh, construction. Um, but we're sitting in our cocktail space right now. Yeah. And yeah. So and you get so to see into the distillery you, from the cocktail We'll space. pull away a little bit, but those are doors right there that you'll be able to see into the distillery. Um, we also have another window that will, if you're sitting at the bar, you'll be able to look into the distillery from that, which is really cool. We're really excited about that. Um, you can literally like drink bourbon while you're watching bourbon being made. Which oh, is that's cool. cool. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're so excited to get it going. Um, we're working our tails off over here. We promise that we're trying. Um, this is the prettiest we've looked all week. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in like five minutes, we'll be taking our makeup off and getting back to work. <laughs> But Great. yeah, we're, we're so excited to get it going. Um, we don't have a timeline because every time we give ourselves a timeline, it doesn't ever work out that way. But we, we, are, yeah, we are hoping for, you know, next year, early, early next year, that fingers crossed, that's our goal. Um, but we do, we, we will keep everybody updated on the process oh, yeah. of um, our cocktail on social media. So please follow along on that. Um, and our cocktail bar is called the Loading Dock at Warehouse Distillery. It's, we like to say it's, part cocktail bar, part tasting room, but all awesome. I love it. I love it. All right. So early 2021, we'll cross yes. our fingers Yes. that this, this could happen at the loading dock at Warehouse Distillery. Love the name. Love the name. Um, all right. It's actually but, on our know, loading dock too. So that's pretty oh, like, perfect. you know, kind of like right on the chin. <laughs> So people can come and do tours and they can come do, do tastings now. They don't have to wait for the tasting room, right? So tell well, them. Well, currently we're still, because of the construction zone, to get into the building, you'd have to go through the construction zone. So we are still holding off on some tours and tastings okay. until it's a little bit more accessible. Okay. Um, and um, then once the cocktail bar is open, everything, everything will be open back up. Um, all of our behind the scenes tours. Um, you'll be able to come in for a cocktail. You don't have to go for a tour. You can just come have a cocktail. We hope to have food trucks on the weekends. Um, yeah, and do some other events and things like that, that people can grab a cocktail and shop around some local vendors and yeah, yeah. So sure. now the name is, is also symbolic of where you're located. So tell people, um, those that aren't necessarily familiar, maybe they didn't know they had a distiller in their backyard. Uh, tell them where, where you're located. Also tell them where they can buy the Boundary Street brand. Okay, so um, we are located on Business 321. Um, like we always <laughs> describe here in the South, we use landmarks. So we're not, far from, uh, we're not far from Bojangles, but we're right across the street from the new John Deere on Business 321 between the Asia market and Fantastic Finds in a big warehouse building. It does look very plain, but we are here. We have a big sign in our yard. On, if you come on the right side of the building. And we are a street down from Boundary Street. So Boundary Street is right there. Um, and that's the name of our whiskey. So um, it's actually the, the street that divides Newton and Conover. Um, so you transition it into both the cities and we were born and raised in Newton, but then moved to Conover as a family. Um, and now we have a business in Newton. So we just felt like it was a perfect meaning for our family. And we all went to Newton Conover High School. Yeah. <laughs> Mom and dad met there. We went. So it's perfect. So, um, and if you feel free to give us a call if you can't find us, um, we are normally here from. We do our class. best with direction. <laughs> I love it. All right. So in closing, what is it like being a first generation business? Um, Part one, and then part two to that question is like looking forward, what's your vision for the distillery and for the business? Um, I think it's kind of, for me, it's it's scary, but it's exciting. And it's also like motivating because you really want to make it work. You know, you're kind of, you're the, the first people to put a little elbow grease into it and build something for the future. And for us, it's not just like a legacy of great business and products in our hometown. It's also that we want, we want to continue to inspire future generations of entrepreneurs and also make Newton proud that we make good quality products and you know that that people from here want to tell their friends from out of town about well we have this great distillery and you know that kind of thing and there's so many other businesses in Newton that do the same thing and we we just are thrilled to be a part of that. Awesome what about you Andy? So yeah I mean pretty much sums it up oh what she said but I mean 
being a first generation is a little overwhelming. Um, definitely, definitely reconsidering that like, oh, you know, but I think that it's great that we can hopefully one day offer it to our children and then their children can offer it to their children. And um, if not, it stays in the community, whether it's our children or not. Um, that's like our hope for it, I think. And building something that, like she said, is here for our community and a cool place for family and friends that are out from out of town to come visit. So um, that's, yeah, I think that that's what we want out of it. Well, kudos to you, um, especially for having this vision that then became a reality. And Bailey, kudos to you for realizing a good thing and moving back home. Uh, <laughs> it took a little bit. <laughs> so, so glad uh, to see some fellow homegrown um, individuals that are passionate about making this place better. Um, I'm in great company and I'm so privileged to, to work with you guys uh, alongside of you and on your behalf. Uh, so I want to thank you for coming on here with me today. Uh, thank you for your passion for, for what you do in our community. Um, so our net, oh, we have a comment from Facebook. It says, uh, thank you, ladies. Congratulations and continued success. Uh, oh, well, thank nice. you. <laughs> thank nice. you. How nice. All right, if you're watching live, uh, thank you guys for coming on. You just missed a, a great interview. Um, I hope you'll watch the replay. But Andy Foss and Bailey Setzer, they're, they're the sister duo, but they're co-owners co of Warehouse Distillery that's in Newton. Uh, so I hope that you'll go back and watch the entire interview. We talked about a lot of great stuff, um, entrepreneurship and the importance of, of uh, fostering that entrepreneurial mindset in the next generation. We talked about the distillery business and what it's like being a woman and a a somewhat male-dominated industry and trailblazing and that right and being an inspiration. We talk about pivoting, uh, really just that that reality of, of being paralyzed by everything that we knew being disrupted, but how to move beyond that. Uh, these these women are incredibly inspiring. So I hope you'll go back and watch the, the replay. Uh, but thank you guys again for being on here. I wanna tell you, those of you that are watching live, give you a plug for our next session. Our next Family Strong series segment will be Friday, November the 6th at the noon hour again. Um, our, our guests will be Robert and Scott Broom, the uh, founders, and actually uh, they are a multi-generation business with Broom Associates. So again, thank you all who are watching live. Please leave a comment and let us know that you're here. Let us know that you watch the replay or watch live, and we will see you again on November the 6th. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us.